One of my biggest pet peeves in the whole culture war is this weird fat phobia, fat shaming, body positivity stuff. Because it's plain and simple. Uh, whether, regardless of all this research and everything, being physically active is extremely important. And it's extremely good for you. And being overweight and out of shape is bad for you. There's a bunch of different studies claiming one thing or another. And there was this big controversy not that long ago where there was an advertisement that said, it was like from the cancer research something in the UK. I have the story pulled up, we'll look at it. it. Talked about how obesity is one of the leading causes of cancer. And everybody got mad, they said it was fat shaming and fat phobia. And it's like, look, all things in moderation, right? You should be exercising your mind. You should be exercising your body. You don't have to lift weights and be a bodybuilder. You don't have to go run full speed. You don't have to be like Casey Neistat who runs like 20 miles a day. I don't know how many miles he actually runs, but man, you'll see Casey will post on Twitter. He ran like 20 miles one morning. It's just, it's crazy. And the point is, you don't have to do that. You go wake up, go for a walk for a half hour. And that's, that's seriously all it takes sometimes to, to be more active. And there are a lot of people who I believe are like crabs in a barrel, right? They're going to try and hold you down and tell you, you don't need to do this. You know, it's, it's okay to be overweight and out of shape. And look, look, by all means, this is a free country. You're allowed to be overweight, out of shape, whatever you want to do. I'm just saying, there, there was a post, I think it was on Reddit, it said, if out of shape and overweight people could borrow a fit person's body for a day, they would immediately start exercising because there, you know, I, I grew up skateboarding. I've always been physically active. And there are periods where you get hurt and you can't skate. And then what ends up happening is you just kind of like fall off the wagon where it becomes easier to not exercise. It's just like, oh man, I gotta get up. I'm like, I just really don't feel it. But when you maintain exercising, even something simple like going for a walk every day, you have so much more energy, you feel so good, it becomes easier and easier to do more and more and more. And then you'll be sleeping less, you'll be eating better. And that's why I just generally recommend, don't break your back, don't lift weights. Very least, just you know, go for a walk. I'm not saying you have to be the thinnest person in the world or ripped, look like you know, Arnold or anything like that. My opinion is just, I want to encourage everyone to be their best selves. And I don't want to encourage lethargy, you know, sedentary behaviors and things like that. Granted, I'll say it again, you can do whatever you want. You'll listen to me. This is just, I think, um, generally, most people would be happier to add a little bit of exercise. So we have this story here from the BBC. It says, obesity to be linked to more female cancers than smoking, okay? There was like some article in the Huffington Post that talked about how everything you know about obesity is wrong, and it's like, sure, like science changes. I just really don't think we'll come to a point where science is gonna be like, it's healthier to be completely, you know, overweight and, you know, immobile. But uh, we have the story, it's from the UK, it says, Obesity is set to overtake smoking as the biggest preventable cause of cancer in UK women by 2043, a, uh, a Cancer Research UK report predicts. Currently, 12% of cancers in women are linked to smoking and 7% to being overweight and obese, but with the number of smokers falling and obesity rates projected to rise, the charity estimates that gap will disappear in 20 year, 25 years' time. The figure assumes that current trends will continue. Cancer Research UK's projections calculate that by 2035, 10% of cancers in women around 25,000 cases, could be related to smoking and 9% to carrying excess weight. It's actually really cool because the numbers aren't entirely, oh, I guess they're showing like a, a total flip. It's great that people aren't smoking anymore. Um, I think smoking is bad. I mean, people are vaping now. Well, I think there's gotta be a lot more studies to, to find the long-term effects of vaping, but smoking's bad for you. And I don't, I, look, I don't smoke and I almost never drink. I'm not like, straight edge, whatever. You know, when I was growing up, people would be like, do you want to smoke, you want to drink? And I'd be like, not really. I used to drink a lot, by the way, but I'd be like, no, I'm, I'm cool. And they'd be like, what are you, straight edge? It's like, no, I just don't want to, I guess. And for me, it's, it's a lot about health, right? For instance, I'm not a nutritionist or anything, but as somebody who, I take pride in being a better person every single day. I, I want to learn more. I want to be stronger. I want to be fit. I want to be mentally fit. I want to know what's going on. I want to be the best I can possibly be. And alcohol is not something that contributes to that. It's a detriment to that. I believe if you want to drink, by all means, people drink for different reasons. For me, it just doesn't do enough for me to warrant consumption. Uh, and so, you know, like, uh, I read somewhere that alcohol inhibits protein synthesis. So like, if you go and exercise, it actually inhibits all that. So I'm like, I don't want to do that. I want to be the best. I want to be better. Every day I want to do better. And I'm far from the best, like ridiculously far. You know, I look at Casey Neistat running 20 miles and I'm just like, how the hell do you do that, you know? 
But, uh, and, 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 and in any case, it's good that people aren't smoking at least, because I feel like smoking literally does nothing. I don't know why people do it. Um, I, I, I have tried, uh, I have smoked a few cigarettes in my lifetime because I feel like most people have. You know, I was like a teenager and someone's like, smoke a cigarette, and I did. And then I was like, this is not enjoyable at all. I don't know why you would do it. I don't know. If you smoke, you can comment. Tell me why you like smoking. So they say in UK men, obesity is not predicted to overtake smoking as a preventable cause of cancer until sometime later because more men than women smoke. Guys, what are you doing? Stop smoking, right? You, you know, you're a men's rights activist talking about the disparity that men have. Hey, stop smoking. There you go. Although obesity is more common among men too, obesity in women is thought to be a greater driver of cancers in the female, po female population. That's interesting. The report says types of cancer linked to smoking include acute my myeloid, myeloid, leukemia, lung, bladder, bowel, cervical, and pancreatic, and stomach. Jeez, Chris. Cancers linked to being overweight or obese include bowel, gallbladder, kidney, liver, breast. Okay, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but I think we get the idea being overweight is bad for you, and I think most people know that. And I, I made a video about this before, and I had someone comment saying that they recognize they're sedentary and overweight, and they're fine with it, and all the de and ramifications and everything. And for me, I'm kind of like, yeah, all right, cool. You're like, hey, do you, you know? Don't, don't take anything I'm saying as like a condemnation of the life you choose to live. I am an American and believe we have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It's just my opinion based on research like this, and I would like you all to, you know, it's, it, I believe that most people would be happier. Not all. That absolutism wouldn't would make sense, but I believe that most people would, would be shocked to find how good, thing, how good things feel when you're, when you're fit and in shape. But what we're here to talk about is I want to talk a little bit about socialized healthcare and kind of like a paradox I found. And I want to talk about this article that I also have. It's a, this was an ad. It said, cancer research, cancer research researches obesity is a cause of cancer campaign ignores the very real issue, issue of medical fat phobia. And when I, when I saw this, I started thinking something interesting. You know, a lot of the same people who argue for body positivity, you know, they put a morbidly obese woman on the cover of like Cosmo. I, I can't remember the woman's name. She's that model and she's like really overweight. And I'm not saying morbidly obese to be offensive. That is the, I believe that is the medical term. I did a video about this. She is morbidly obese. They have like ad campaigns showing morbidly obese. That, that, that's what it's literally called. There's overweight, obese, and morbidly obese. And this woman is. And I started thinking that a lot of these same people, like the, the body positivity stuff is on the left alongside the nationalized healthcare stuff. And I'm kind of like, you know, it kind of makes sense at least among that, that, that where, where those things intersect among that population, that if you are morbidly obese, you would probably be, probably be in favor of socialized healthcare because you probably need healthcare and it would cost more money for you than it would the average person, right? Somebody who goes running every day and eats like healthy oat bran and you know has like all their you know cholesterol and everything balanced, not going to spend a lot of time at the doctor. Somebody who's morbidly obese probably will, can have a lot of complications, potentials for cancer. And then a socialized healthcare system is beneficial because it's, it's way cheaper for you. And, and that's interesting to me because I, I have a, a personal theory, which is probably rooted in fact somewhere. I don't know. I, I just not, I researched this, but I, I feel like people who are below the median income tend to be more socialist and people who are above the median income tend to be more capitalist for obvious reasons. If you're below the median, you will personally benefit from socialism. If you're above the median, you will not benefit. You will, you will be harmed by socialism. So it's natural then that everyone is trying to fight for something. If you make more than the, Ameri the American median, you will likely be like, why should someone take my money? Because you know, they're not successful or you know, able to make money. If you're below it, then you're gonna hear people say, I work a full-time job. I deserve to live in this country and be able to survive with healthcare and, and, and the same things. And honestly, I, I kind of lean more towards I do believe that if you are working a full-time job in this country, you should be able to have basic necessities. But basic necessities are resources, right? Healthcare is a service provided by someone and the tools are made by someone. So it's impossible to literally just be like medicine for everybody, right? But I, but I do believe that we can do more in pooling our resources and creating like a some kind of some I don't know what the answer is. One of the one of the main reasons I'm not entirely on board with like a full universal like nationalized healthcare is that I don't view that as any different than just having insurance. You will still be paying a premium. You will, uh, you're still paying it to somebody who then pays the bill for you. And so I'm like, what's the difference between that and private insurance? Right, private insurance is profitable, 
but then why don't we just do a public option with private and then you have your choice. You can say, I want to go to the guys, you know, the government option or maybe nonprofit options. I don't know. I think the one of the biggest issues is this this mix in the in the system. Uh, well, I, I think the, the mix in the system is a is a would be a good solution. Right now, we just have like private that's mandated and it's kind of like weird and gummy. But, you know, I'm not, I'm not an expert. Let's read a little bit of this and then I want to move on because I got I got more videos to talk about. She says, have you ever seen the adverts at the bus stop lately? Noticed a billboard on your commute to work? Witnessed the hullabaloo on Twitter this week. This is, this is from uh, March of this year. She says that uh, Cancer Research launched a campaign saying obesity is a cause of cancer. Many people, myself included, have something to say. Uh, let's see. The campaign's print adverts featured bold black text. We get that. The campaign's, uh, campaign's accompanying video. Uh, she says, as a fat woman, I know the medical industry hates me. All right, that's... that's she says, what if fatness isn't a cause of cancer? Those who have studied science, statistics, psychology will know that correlation does not imply causation. In other words, just because two things appear to be linked does not mean that they are related one way or one <laughs> to one another in a meaningful way. The American Cancer Society states that links between body weight and cancer are complex and not yet fully understood. Correlation is known, but causation is not. Cancer research themselves even say it's very clear that there is a link between cancer and obesity, but it's still not completely understood how exactly obesity causes cancer. What this woman fails to understand is that what they're saying is not that we don't know if cancer is caused by obesity, but there's a link. What they're saying is we know it causes cancer. We just don't know exactly why. And I look, you want me to read an op-ed from somebody who's saying that two different cancer research organizations are wrong because she's fat and she says the medical industry hates her, I just, I'm going to have to say, you know, I really don't think so. I'm going to have to go with the organizations that do this for a living. Uh, and I mean no disrespect to you, but I would prefer it if, you know, people took their health more seriously. But what can I say? You know, we, we have a free society. Anyway, I'm not going to read into this. You heard what I have to say. I got a couple more uh, videos coming up in just a few minutes, so stick around.